the reason I promote doing your own research before you do anything medical, whether that is a procedure or a medication, is because there are several instances in my personal life where doctors have been wrong, whether it be with the diagnosis or whether it be with the prescription medicine that they were wanting me or my family member to take. I'm gonna run through a few of those just to give you all some perspective as to why my viewpoint is not really one of mistrust. It is one of more information. More information can never hurt. It's called making an educated decision. When you have more facts, when you have more information, you're gonna make the best decision for you and your family. So I'm gonna start with a pretty big misdiagnosis two back to back. My dad died in March of 2020 and no, it was not of COVID. He actually died of cancer. Um, it started in January of 18 when his back was out of whack. He didn't feel comfortable. He had hip pain, um, went to the chiropractor a few times, was not working. Finally saw his physician who then later diagnosed him, a spine specialist, mind you, diagnosed him with bursitis of the hip. So the treatment was injections into the hip to help ease the pain of the bursitis. In May of 18, my dad had lost weight. The pain was not going away. He was walking like a very old crippled man in pain, a lot of pain, fell down a few times. I could have told you that he did not have bursitis of the hip. Turns out after the appropriate tests, my dad had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He had a tumor that had wrapped around the lower part of his spine, part of which could be removed, was removed by surgery. The other um, pieces of it had to be removed by radiation and chemotherapy. He recovered for a short time from his cancer. But then in November, um, Thanksgiving weekend, November of 19, his face fell. So he's here in Des Moines. He goes to an urgent care clinic here in the area. And the doctor told him he has Bell's palsy. No big deal. Prescribed him some medication, some steroids, sent him on his way. The face continued to fall. There was pain associated with this side of his face. Started to lose his hearing, even affected his eyesight went back to his neurosurgeon who did the surgery on his back, said, yep, Bell's palsy, continue taking the meds, we'll give you a stronger steroid. Things were not getting better. Close to New Year's, thank goodness, my mother and my sister drove my dad to the ER at Mayo Clinic where they found out that the cancer had returned. It just was in a different form in this part of his spine on the back of his neck. He didn't make it. And you know what? If they would have caught that cancer right at the start of his pain when he went to the spine specialist to begin with, I don't know if he would still be alive today, but I have to wonder. Those were two pretty severe misdiagnoses from very smart physicians. So misdiagnoses can happen, and that is why it is so crucial to ask questions and know your body. Here's some smaller, more simpler cases. When our daughter was 12, she's now 20, so this was some time ago. She couldn't breathe through her nose. She couldn't eat without breathing heavy. She couldn't sleep well at night. We took her to the doctor, and his answer was that her turbinates were swollen in her nose. So these tissues were so swollen that she could hardly breathe. His remedy was a prescription nasal spray. My question to him was, she's 12. How long is she going to have to take this nasal spray in order for this to clear up? Well, forever. Hmm, I don't think I want to put my child on any prescription forever. Can we look at other things that we can do to fix the problem instead of just masking it with a prescription medication? Good thing I asked because we went to an ENT for a second opinion who said, oh, not a problem. We can do an in and out surgery. We can just cauterize those turbinates. They'll shrink. She should be able to breathe. 85% success rate with that type of surgery. No medication. Let's try it. It worked wonders. She's been able to breathe beautifully ever since and no meds. And come to find out today that that same prescription that they wanted her to take actually does more harm than good to the tissues 
inside your nose. The other example that I will give is a personal example, mine, which was just a few uh, years ago, where my periods were just ridiculously heavy, not to get too gross or personal, but I am, you know, in my 40s, pre-menopausal, and my periods were just ridiculously heavy. I didn't feel like I could leave the house. I had um, low iron. I felt tired all of the time. And my doctor, after three visits, my OBGYN wanted to put me either on birth control pills or the birth control um, implant. I do not need any more hormones going through this body than what's already happening. I don't plan on having any more children. My husband has a vasectomy. Why on earth would I go onto a prescription drug that alters my hormones to just control my periods for what? Another five years? 10 years? Nope, not gonna happen. Finally talked to a different OBGYN who said, you know what, ablation might be the right thing for you. Again, I'm not all for surgery, but if surgery, if a simple procedure can fix an ailment, versus being on a prescription medicine for the rest of your life or for a number of years, let's look into it. Looked into it, did it, great, no problem, no meds. Now for two really simple examples of clients that I have been working with um, who have had conversations with their doctors and quite frankly, doctors should be smarter than this and have more insight into nutrition and how the body actually works. Um, these uh, examples make me really sad because um, as a certified nutritionist and as a wellness coach, these would not be the pieces of advice that I would give to anyone, but I've got one client who is, um, yes, obese several chronic illnesses um, because of his obesity. And when his doctor and him had their last conversation, the doctor told him that he needed to lose weight. And I can agree with that because that is exactly what needs to happen. And that's why I can hopefully help this individual. But when my client asked his doctor, well, how do you suggest I go about losing weight? His doctor told him that uh, he should just skip breakfast because that's what his doctor does and it seems to work great for him. Not the answer I would have given. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day and um, you need to take that quite seriously. It's not about skipping meals. It's about eating the correct things and in the right portions. Another um, <clears throat> person who uh, has trouble yo-yo dieting, the scale is up and down with them. They also have an addiction to Mountain Dew and were recently put on um, high blood pressure medicine by their doctor, um, probably because of the yo-yo dieting and probably because of the soda. Their doctor said, here's your medication. Um, yeah, probably it's gonna be a lifelong thing now. Um, and yeah, totally acceptable um, to have one Mountain Dew a day, perfectly fine. Mm. Again, not the answer that I would have given, especially if you're a physician. What are you thinking? Why is it acceptable to have one soda a day when you know that the average person should have around 30 grams of added sugar per day total? There's way more than that in one Mountain Dew. Let me sum up my commentary by saying this. Do your research. I can't say it enough. I know that I am like a broken record when I say this, but it is so important and I want you all to know that the information I put out there is not to make people fearful. That is the last thing I want to do. My intent is to be kind, is to inform you because at the end of the day, I want everybody leading a healthy, long life. And you can only do that in today's day and age by being self-reliant and questioning um, things even the medical professionals tell you. Um, you know, our government is obviously involved and going back to my dad's um, circumstances, his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma was actually a direct result of him coming in contact with Agent Orange when he served in Vietnam. And at that time, the government was telling folks, they actually did campaigns, letting people know that this chemical, the chemicals in Agent Orange were safe for our soldiers to be around. Now, today we know that that is not true. Uh, the manufacturers of Agent Orange are actually the manufacturers today that make Roundup. Um, and there's been some lawsuits uh, with Monsanto and Roundup in late. 
as there has, uh, I've mentioned this before, a class action lawsuit right now against Merck, the maker of Gardasil. There are kids in their young 20s who are infertile, who are going through reproductive issues right now in their 20s because they got the Gardasil vaccine 10, 15 years ago, and now they're having serious problems. That was safe and effective back then, up until this last year, and you don't see those advertisements anymore. So you have to ask questions. You have to do your own research. Um, I cannot say it enough. So please, I don't say it out of fear. I say it because I truly care um, deeply for people. If you have questions, comments, please let me know.